are my takeaways here? Time for my fake away. And this week, I've got my fake away, or my takeaway, from P.F. Chang's. We have a P.F. Chang's here, just around the corner in Covent Garden in London, which, very luckily, because I know it's so popular in the US as well. And we've gone for one of their favorite dishes, and that is their lettuce wraps, or their yoksong. which is basically like a stir fry in lettuce wrap. We've got this Chinese sausage, and let's see what else is in here. So we've got our actual wraps themselves. They've gone for iceberg lettuce here, and then, interesting sauce. I have no idea what's in that sauce. We'll work it out. Um, but it smells kind of sweet and sour. And then we've got the yoksung, or the filling for the takeaway. Quite a lot of dark soy in there. Real deep, sweet and savoury. They've got some crispy vermicelli here. Well, I've got a few other different ingredients here. I'm going to show you my recreation and my version of this P.F. Chang dish. So guys, this Fake Away series is all in honour of our new Patreon subscription. Don't forget to head over to Patreon and subscribe there and you can win different prizes each month and get exclusive content just like this. That actually tastes really good and uh, I'm going to show you my version but it doesn't mean that mine is better or worse than the other. It's more about just showing you how to recreate this dish at home. So, and when you're at home, you can put a lot of different things in. So I've gone for a few crunchy veg, just to make it a little bit more colorful um, and a little bit more balanced. Start with some carrot. And I'm gonna go for sort of small dices of carrot. Lettuce wraps is one of those things that we used to have when we were kids. It was sort of pre-dinner snack. I'm just gonna set up what I like to call my wok clock of ingredients here. And it's a wok clock because we love round plates. They start at 12 o'clock with my first ingredient, my hardest vegetable. And then we'll go all the way around with all the different ingredients that I'm gonna go for next. So that just means that when I'm starting my stir fry, everything's really nice and organized. I know what's gonna go in first, second, third, and there's no confusion. I don't have to look back for the recipe later on. Everything's going to be nice and finely diced so that it, it sort of weaves in and out of the minced meat. And I've got some minced chicken here. Some onion. Of course, this will all wilt down into the stir fry. Celery, again, added texture and flavour. Similar sort of size chunks of celery. So I'm just going to go in length first before I then chop that through. I'm loading up my wok clock of ingredients here. So a bit of ginger and garlic, classic Chinese ingredients or base ingredients. And you can put this at whatever stage in the stir fry you're comfortable with. So a couple of cloves of garlic. And then we're gonna finely chop or roughly chop these ingredients. Very roughly chopped garlic. So as I say, you can put it here, depending on how comfortable you are, or well, the closer to the start, if you're quick enough with the wok, is also fine. Ginger, same as the garlic. Roughly chopped. And then some spring onion, which I'll use for the end. Nice rings of spring onion. I like to put quite a lot of spring onion in on top of the stir fry. So I think it really, not just sort of garnishes it, makes it look pretty, but it really adds to the flavor as well. So my sort of main ingredients here are set up for the stir fry. You've got some shiitake mushrooms here as well. They're dehydrated mushrooms. They've been soaked in hot water overnight. The reason why we tend to use dry mushrooms like this over fresh is that we're using different sources and we want this, the mushrooms, the dehydrated mushrooms to soak in all that flavor. Again, finely diced 
or chopped up. I mean, it's chopped and nicely diced, but it's not like super fine because I still want the texture of those mushrooms. All I've got now is my actual, my Chinese sausage, which is kind of like a sweet version or slightly sweet version of chorizo. Um, it's got that same texture. Um, and I'm gonna cut this again in similar sort of chunks. It's very tough, so just go careful when you're cutting into it. You can buy this in most Asian supermarkets. For some people it's quite an acquired taste, but it just sort of, for me, balances out that sweet, savory flavor. You want it to crisp up a little, so I'm gonna add this just before the carrot. So that'll create a little bit more sort of fat that comes out and oil that comes out from the sausage there. Lastly, I've got my minced chicken, which I need to marinate. Now you could just stir fry this without any marinade, but I quite like to give a base of flavor in most of my stir fries, especially when you're using meat. So a pinch of salt and a pinch of sugar and some sesame oil should do the job. Give that a good massage through, get that flavor into there. The rest of the flavor is gonna come from the sauce that I put over the top of the stir fry. Wash my hands. And with this, we saw in the takeaway, we, you know, they've got this crispy fried vermicelli as garnish and gives you that extra crunch. I'm gonna show you how we make that or how the takeaways and restaurants actually make that. You wanna deep fry some vermicelli essentially. First thing you wanna do is you wanna check the oil. I've got some wooden chopsticks here. Anything wooden's good because if you put them in, if they start to fizz, that you, then you know you're, you're at about 180 degrees C. So that's a good heat for deep frying. So I'm gonna place this in. And you can see how quick that is and how sort of almost magical it is. Just turn that once to get the other side. Woo! Wow, that is enough fried vermicelli for a whole restaurant. Now the last thing I gotta do before I start stir frying and doing all that sort of fast wok cooking is set up the stir fry sauce. It's got a really deep savory flavor. So a couple of tablespoons of oyster sauce, I'm pretty sure that's where that savory flavor comes from. And then about a tablespoon of light soy sauce. Some Shaoxing rice wine and about half a teaspoon of sugar. I've got some chicken stock that I'll use to sort of keep the stir fry going, but I'll leave that to the actual sort of wok cooking process. A little bit of sesame oil we can put into the sauce as well. You could put it at the end, either way this works. And then to just bring out that sort of dark, deep dark color, a bit of dark soy, a couple of splashes of that will deepen that color immediately. So that's my stir fry sauce. And then it actually the, the, the PF Chang lettuce wraps came with a dipping sauce. I'll do that at the end. Now the first thing I'm gonna do with my stir fry here is actually sear my minced chicken I want to do this so it cooks really nicely and separates out before I then bring it back into the stir fry later on. My heat is really important. When I first start, I'm going to take a little bit of oil into the base of my wok and I'm just going to swirl that around, make sure it's really nice and smoking hot and then my minced chicken, my seasoned minced chicken is going to go in. You want to hear that sizzling sound. Never lose your sizzle. Start to press into it. And you can see I'm kind of chopping into the meat here to start to break it up. Fold that over and then do the same on the other side. And the reason why I'm cooking my mince first is because the wok's really nice and hot, hasn't got loads of other ingredients in it. And you can see I'm not really picking my wok up here because I want to retain as much heat as possible so that the meat doesn't stick at the bottom of the wok. Now it's time to give it a flick. Good old wok toss, long push forward, quick flip back. Now that my meat is pretty much cooked through, 
I'm gonna just bring that out of the wok and then I'll start my wok clock. Straight back on it, a little bit more oil and you'll notice I add a little bit of oil at a time as and when I need it. First things first, my ginger and garlic. That's gonna sear nicely, not for too long. You don't wanna burn it. So straight in with my lap cheng, my Chinese sausage. That's gonna add more fat to that wok. And again, same again, you don't wanna sort of char it too much, you just want it to get that smokiness off the wok. I want my wok to get to a nice smoking point before I add my next ingredient, and that's the diced carrot. Fold that through nicely. As your wok starts to smoke up all the way around, then it might need a bit of movement. Flick through, a couple of wok tosses, and the tummy and the head, and then back down on the heat. I wanna keep my carrots and my veg nice and crunchy. So I'm gonna start going round the wok clock, one ingredient at a time. Onions in. Same again with the onions. You just wanna soften them slightly and give a nice sort of smoky flavor around the outside. Back onto a high heat. Push that to the back to allow space for my next ingredients. And from here on in, it's gonna finish quite quickly. Just a little drizzle of oil. My celery and mushrooms can pretty much go in at the same time. Bring the rest of the ingredients over the top so they don't burn. And then fold that through gently. Just love that sound of that sizzling wok. Smells delicious. It's got that sweetness from the lap chung, the Chinese sausage. My minced meat is gonna come straight back in at this point. Remember, that's already cooked, so it's just a case of folding it through. And now, we allow the wok to sort of build up as much heat as possible before I add the sauce. I've got some cashews here for a bit more crunch as well. Not necessarily what's in the takeaway that I've got, but why not add it? This dish is all about texture. Now you can see the smoke just sort of building up around the outside of the wok here. And at that point, I'm gonna to start to pour this sauce around the edge. Now the dish from P.F. Chang's is definitely a darker color to this. So you feel like you really wanna go for that sort of mimic, then add a little bit more dark soy. And I've got my chicken stock to come in as well. Just flick that through and you can see immediately that color change. I don't personally wanna go any darker than that but the dark soy will caramelize nicely. Chicken stock, again, just wait for that smoke and heat to build up around the wok before you add it. Bring that to a boil. Cool. Once all the sauce is sort of collected into the meat and not sitting too much at the bottom of the wok, then you know all that flavors in the meat and the veg. And that's when you, if you are going to add any cashews or nuts, you can throw them in at this point so that they keep nice and crunchy. Now, my stir fry is definitely ready, so I'm going to serve that up. I've got my filling for my lettuce wraps. My finely chopped spring onion over the top. So I'm almost there. I'm going to set up the rest of my plate with all this awesome stuff. I've got my actual lettuce leaves. I've used gem lettuce here. You can use iceberg. And if you want to see how to sort of separate iceberg lettuce leaves out from each other really easily, there's a lettuce wrap video on our YouTube channel as well. And then the actual dipping sauce, which is what I sort of... Not, I wouldn't usually use this type of dipping sauce for a lettuce wrap, but I think it tastes really great. I'm pretty sure that starts with a base of fish sauce, which I've got here. And either some rice vinegar or lime juice. I've got some rice vinegar. It's 
got a sweetness to it. So certainly some sugar to sweeten up and balance out that salty and sour. And it's also got a little sort of tingling spiciness to it. Not, it's not spicy spicy, but it has got some spice to it. So I'm gonna put a pinch of chili powder in there. So that's gonna go straight over the top. Let's have a little taste of that. See if I'm close. Very fish saucy at the moment. I'm gonna add a bit more sugar to that and a bit more rice vinegar. The colour's not quite the same yet and I think it's probably gonna come from some soy. Let's have a little taste first. Mmm, getting much closer. And this is the beauty of recreating a restaurant dish. I'm going for colour as well as flavour. Does that match guys? I think we're very close. This is light soy here that I'm adding to this dipping sauce to get that colour right. And we'll add a bit of saltiness as well. I feel like it needs a little bit more chilli. So I'm going to add a couple of pinches in there. And there is my recreated yoksong. Okay, so give us a little tidy up and then we will compare the two dishes, my recreation or my fake away of my own takeaway in just a second. So I'm gonna try the P.F. Chang one first. So I've got a good idea of the taste and texture. Take a little bit more of that vermicelli, why not? That is lovely. A good smokiness to the meat. A lot more meaty than I'm gonna guess. My one is, because I know what I put in mine. But it is delicious. I like the smoky flavour. And now for my fake away. A bit of that sauce as well. Flavour is very similar. I think I've gone for a little less smokiness with the wok hay. Personally, especially when cooking at home, things like this. I love that extra sort of added texture of the cashews or the veg and you can be in charge of that yourself. Sauce, pretty much bang on I'd say. Look, really simple cooking. This is my fake away for my own takeaway. If you want your suggestions to feature in our fake away series, then you have to sign up to Patreon to give us those suggestions. Sign up now and you can give us the suggestions for our Fake Way series.